You're watching Action News Now. Storm Tracker weather coverage you can count on. Mountains in Northern California are covered in beautiful, much needed snow from the weekend storm. This is Soda Springs in Nevada County up there off of Interstate 80 where they got as much as six feet of snow on Sunday. Look at those rooftops, pretty incredible. I didn't see the snow, but I did hide out from the wind this Saturday. I couldn't believe it whipping around out there, Jason. Yeah, it was really windy. The Chico Airport in particular had a 55 mile an hour wind gust over the weekend as that storm was plowing over Northern California. We had some really good amounts of rain in the valley and the foothills, and we had some good snow in the mountains. Speaking of which, the Trinity Mountains in Northern Sierra were at 201% of average for this date. That is exactly what we want to see. And the state of California is 223% of where we should be on this date. So it's going the right way for us, but now we have a fairly clear sky. This morning it was clear and chilly for the valley. We had lows in the 30s. The mountains had some clouds, and that kept the temperatures in the 20s, but a lot of places are not going to have that benefit tomorrow morning. The highs were still below average, though, despite all the sunshine. It was upper 40s and lower 50s for the valley, and mostly 30s for the higher terrain. Alturas only got to the freezing mark, but you can see hardly any cloud cover at all for the valley. We have some clouds that are trying to push in from northwestern Nevada into northeastern California, but they're not going to be rain or snow bearing clouds for us. But with that snow on the ground, Modoc County, Lassen County, parts of Plumas County, we're going to have a good chance for some areas of low clouds and fog forming over that cold snowy ground. For the valley, we're not going to have a good chance for any fog. South of Butte County, there's going to be a chance for it as you get closer to Sacramento, but not much fog will just have areas of frost. So make sure you wear that extra layer tomorrow morning by the afternoon. Although it won't be as warm as it should be this time of year, we'll have a lot of sunshine and it's going to feel fairly seasonable. Then we have some more high clouds moving into our sky by Wednesday afternoon and a couple disturbances will try to move our way over the course of the next seven days. We'll have a few more clouds on Thursday. Another round of clouds coming in late in the weekend and early next week, but that storm is going to miss us to the northeast. So we're going to have some breezes. We'll have a few more clouds by Sunday, but compared to the last several storms, it's going to be very quiet weather for us and we'll also have almost seasonable weather. Slightly cooler than average, but not too shabby for the last few days of autumn. Hard to believe that winter is just about a week and a half away. As far as the wind is concerned, we're going to have very much of that late tonight through early tomorrow or on Wednesday. Still fairly quiet weather for us all the way through the next seven days. Here's your forecast for tomorrow. It's going to be a chilly start to a cool day for northwestern California. Lows in the 20s with highs in the upper 30s and lower 40s. If we don't get the low clouds and fog to form, it's going to be cold tomorrow morning. Single digits and teens for the northeast. Highs between 30 in Alturas and 40 in Shingletown. Also have a high tomorrow of 40 degrees in Cohasset after a chilly low of 28. 43 degrees for a high in Megalia and 45 degrees for Paradise with a lot of sunshine tomorrow, but it's going to be a chilly start. You're going to need that extra layer for the valley. Also well below freezing and about 10 degrees cooler than average. A low of 27 in Redding and 28 degrees for Red Bluff. Highs from around the lower 50s, also about 5 degrees cooler than it should be. And the Chico area will also have lows tonight in the upper 20s and lower 30s. High Highs and lower 50s with a lot of sunshine on Tuesday. Next seven days in Chico, no good chances for any rain or strong wind. Bad and good for us, but we're definitely going to have a lot of sunshine. And for the Reading area, we would love to have more rain. It's just not in the forecast for us. And by Friday, finally climbing back to where we should be this time of year with a high of 57 degrees. Sounds pretty warm. Thanks, Jason. Well, new at 530, it's Big Tobacco versus California Voters, who the Supreme Court sided with on the recent flavor ban. Plus some relief to our west. We show you how things are going at the Mauna Loa eruption on the Big Island. But first, Brittany Griner back in the state, but states, but still not home. What we're learning about her 10 months trapped in Russia.
Are we super heavy? I forgot. Let's kill Artemis just in case. She said locker by it. And then when we get to the break, I said it's, it's actually locker by it. So you're saying it's locker by Even if he's, even if he's. Oh, you got it. Yeah. Sorry. A solution is in the works to help the homeless in Oroville get them off the streets. The money's there, but to get going, the city needs to narrow down some shelter options. Action News Now reporter Lauren Cooper spoke to some homeless people about what they hope will come of the planned expansion. Oroville Rescue Mission is in the early planning stages of expanding their shelter to make more room for people to stay here. The shelter is calling the new program Mission Esperanza after it was recently awarded a 2.7 million grant from the city. I spoke with people living in the shelter to get a better idea of what it's been like on the inside. We should have like more housing there, you know, because I think it's a little bit too crowded. Tally Boatwright has been living at Oroville Rescue Mission ever since her car broke down and she couldn't afford to fix it. So I have a bunk that I've been on for about um, four months. We have um, two rooms for um, women with children and they have their bathroom. Richard Harmon has stayed in the shelter at one point, but says he didn't feel safe there. They need to build a new one, mm -hmm. you know, more code, more um, regulations, maybe even security, mm -hmm. you know, protect the women, the guys. He says he's had his stuff stolen from inside the shelter before. Because there's massive theft, people, women's purses being stolen, their phones. I spoke with the executive director, Alan Dykes, who did not want to weigh in on the plans for the expansion or current safety and security protocols. But he says the shelter is taking in more people than there are beds available. The exact location is still yet to be determined, but they're hoping to put it nearby their existing location over on Lincoln Boulevard. In Oroville, Lauren Cooper, Action News Now, coverage you can count on. Here's some of the latest numbers we have from the Orville Rescue Mission's executive director. Right now, there are about 28 or 29 women staying in the shelter. There are only 23 beds available, though. In the men's shelter, it's housing more than double capacity, with 60 staying there, but only 20 